Hello Amiga coders, this is Photon of Scoopix again. Uh, this is part 3 in our tutorial series, in my tutorial series, and uh, we're gonna make this um, this line move up and down. How do we achieve this? Well, we have a main loop here, which in this case, because of the raster weights, repeats every 50 seconds. Um, and we want to modify this l main loop, frame loop, whatever you call it, uh, to move the scan line up and down at one pixel um, every one fiftieth of a frame. Every frame, namely one fiftieth of a second, rather. Okay. To do this, clearly we have to make um, the vertical stop position here, we have to make that dynamic um, instead of um, static we've given the uh, exact position and that will not change unless we change it to a variable. A variable in assembler is normally a memory position or the contents of a memory position or the contents of a register uh, normally the data registers are used for storing data and the address registers are used as pointers to data. So what we do is we change this to D7. Now if we assemble this we get an illegal operand. This is a limitation of the instruction set in the 68000 series um, processors. To fix this we swap the operands and likewise down here, this should be the same position that we wait for to leave that scan line and then set, reset the background color. Now, if we examine the registers, we can see that register D7, as it happens, contains uh, hex E4. That's not necessarily what we want, and there's no way of telling what the register contents are when uh, our program is called, for example, from the assembler or from the operating system. So clearly we need an init part to our program in which we move the value AC to register D7. Now if, you, if, if we run this now, we should... oh, sorry. My escape key is a bit wobbly. Um, if we run this, we should see the exact same result as before. The difference is we can now set this to another value, for example, 8C, and it will no longer be in the middle of the screen, but 32 scan lines up. So far, so good. But how do we move it? Well, clearly, we could simply add or subtract a value. So if we add 1 to D7 on each frame, it should move um, semi-slowly downwards and then probably wrap around and keep going. Let's see if that's what happens. No, that's not what happens. What happens here is that as the position is increased, on the next, on the next iteration of this loop, Remember, there's nothing to say that this is a frame loop other than the weights. This means that on the next iteration, the D D7 will be one more, one pixel lower down. And in fact, that's already where the raster position is. So this first weight becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, which means that it immediately goes on, changes color and goes through again for maybe 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 times within microseconds and then it goes beyond that line and starts waiting again. That's not what we want. So to fix this I can demonstrate this by subtracting one instead. That should make it behave properly and as you can see it does. Um, 
but we want to add to it and that means we have to make this a proper frame loop now there's different ways of doing this you could add a weight for vertical blank you could uh, put all this code inside um, a v um, vertical blank interrupt and so on I prefer to just have um, an inlight raster weight for these simple purposes it will do we'll call this weight frame and um, we have to of course remove the color change and change this back to some fixed position because now the raster the color line weight position is dynamic then we need some sort of reference to what a frame is I prefer to wait to about the bottom here that means I can initiate some large blitz when I make a demo proper that will execute while all the bit planes are off during the vertical blank and and uh, that will give me the most gain in terms of how many scan lines are consumed by the by the blit we'll get into blitz later uh, I will wait for raster position FF that's the highest position but not really uh, because the reason I'm comparing a byte here is to simplify things but in fact um, there is a bit in, in address DFF005 which tells me if um, well the vertical raster position is uh, really a 9-bit position that means it has values from 0 to about hex 139 so it needs 9 bits to store it when it go, goes beyond line FF it wraps around this byte in this register address to 0 and, and instead sets the the high order bit <coughs> so that it becomes 256, 257, and so on until raster position hex 139. Now we can run this and we'll, it will move down in an orderly fashion. Now we need it to go down, then up, then down, then up, and so on, and so we need to make the add value dynamic. We do it the same way. We add a data register instead to this vertical position counter. We should go ahead and comment this. Start Y position. And this is the Y add. add one to y position all is clear now I haven't changed anything all I've done is moved the number one the value one into the into data reg register six and so you see this is the same effect now we need a lower or bottom limit on the screen where this value this add value will be inverted to go upwards in other words we want to uh, make this one a minus one instead we have to negate this number so uh, what we do then we can uh, prettify this a little bit divide it into chunks you can use semicolon to comment so that we could say frame loop start and frame loop end. Now, um, <clears throat> if you want to fluff up, fluff up your code, go ahead and do that. And what we want to do right at the very start of the frame is to add the delta value or the add value to the position and then we want to check 
that it's um, a valid position. If I would let this go on, it would reach some sort of strange position and maybe wrap around and, and behave erratically. In fact, it wouldn't, but uh, um, for the purposes of of, of um, teach teaching, uh, I will. It's always good to have checks on values so that they are behaving as you want them to. So we will add a check. We will compare the y position to some fixed bottom position. And we do this by comparing a fixed bottom position, let's call it f0, to the y position. And if d7 is lower than that, then it's OK. Otherwise, it should negate the add value to become minus 1. And furthermore, it should make sure that um, it stays within bounds. I'm going to skip that because what will happen is it will reach this fixed position. Then it will negate and immediately in the next frame add the negated value uh, back so that it goes upward again. Let's check this. First we have to add the branch label. So let's recap this. We compare d7 to a fixed position and if it's lower then we should skip the negation, then it's okay. But if it's higher then we should make the 1 in d6 a minus 1 instead. We have to negate that. Let's try it. And it should bounce up and then it will continue forever upward. It will wrap around and and um, <clears throat> actually it will... We, we don't have to go into exactly what happens when we run unfinished code. Let's finish the code instead. So we need um, a top check also. I'll write a comment here. Let's take some position above AC. Um, for example, hex 40. That should be about here on the screen. And if the position is higher, then it's OK. Higher in numerical value, lower down on the screen. Else, it should negate the di direction value or add value. Okay, so this is our program. We initiate by setting a y position start value and a direction start value. This is our main loop. We wait for the end of the frame, somewhere around here, vertically on the screen. And we add the direction value, then we check if the value, actual dynamic position is within bounds and reverse it at e either end. Then we wait for this position, change color, wait for the next, for the end of the line, and change the color back. That's what we do. Let's try it. And that's it. That's your first <laughs> little demo. In the next part, we will um, go further with this demo idea. We'll get more control by removing the uh, background. We, would, we don't want to see the, that background. We want to make our own. See you in the next part.